Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Victor, and today we'll be talking about electro reception in dolphins. When thinking about dolphins, we tend to usually associate them with being the friendly creatures of the ocean, swimming and interacting with humans, or using their ability to use sonar, which is also known as their sixth sense to some. But, however, today we're going to focus on dolphins and their unique ability of electroreception. What is electroreception? Electroreception is a sensory modality that allows animals to detect electrical fields that are produced by any living animal, moving item, or by water currents and distortions produced by objects in larger electromagnetic fields. Now there are two forms of this sensory modality which are identified as passive and active electroreception. Active electroreception is when the organism generates its own electric field and gauges disturbances produced by objects in the vicinity. Passive electroreception is when the organism senses weak electric fields generated by other organisms. The ability is known to be associated with the select aquatic mammals and vertebrates such as hammer-haired sharks, platypus, catfish, and dolphins. Now, with dolphins, although not all species, possess an extraordinary sensory capability called echolocation. However, certain dolphins known as the Guyana dolphin and the bottlenose dolphin in a more limited capacity have the unique ability of electroreception. Next question would be, how do dolphins detect electrical stimuli? Well, we both had the same question because I was wondering as well, where could possibly this ability to sense electrical currents or electrical activity be located within the dolphin? Well, the main three points that we will focus on next are the ampullae of Lorenzini. I don't know what type of name, is that Italian? But it, uh, it's a different name for the snout or the rostrum of the dolphin, which is actually where the gland is located. Um, it allows for recognition of changes in electrical fields. And we have the vibrissal crypts that acquire uh, within a dolphin postnatally. The ampullae of Lorenzini is a small like jelly filled pores located on the skin of the dolphins primarily around their head and snout. These pores are interconnected with nerve fibers and contain specialized cells that can detect electrical signals in the water. Now also another name for these uh, nerve fibers are the vibrissal crypts. Now, if you look at the picture, you can see that on the side of the snout of the dolphin, actually, you can see like these nodes and usually on each side of the, of the snout of the dolphin, there is about four to seven nodes, which is known as the vibrissal crypts that they acquire postnatally. Through the ampullae of Lorzini, this is where the dolphins become electroreceptive, meaning they can like detect weak electrical fields generated by the animals or objects in their environment. This incredible like sensitivity to electrical stimuli provides dolphins with valuable information about their surroundings. So you can, in a way, kind of give it more of a human visual. Think of it like a, um, I would say for like a metal detector, probably. Now, it's probably not the best one, but it's one I can think of right now. Um, the snout kind of plays as a metal detector. So say if a, a dolphin is at the bottom of the ocean uh, and they're like detecting for food or say it's very murky water and they can't really see very well, they can in a way use their snout as an electrical detector to try to send out signals to come back to make sure that they know their surroundings. It gives them a sense of self and where they're at even within the dark without being able to see. Now the ampullae of Lorzini, it while it focuses more on electrical stimuli, it has a lot to do with, you know, many different functions for the dolphin. So definitely with like hunting and navigation, as I spoke about earlier, trying to find their way through like murky waters or like not ideal environments. Um, it helps with them hunting prey, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. But by detecting the electrical impulses produced by like the muscle contractions of their prey, Dolphins can locate and capture prey more effectively, especially in environments with like limited visibility, as I mentioned earlier. And now on the second figure, as you can see to the right, it is actually a, a depiction of the snout of the dolphin. Now, it was kind of controversial to whether, you know, their snout actually served any purpose at all. 
um, mostly people focused on like the head or the cranium right above both of their eyes and they would look at that for like uh, echolocation so they knew that was a functioning part of the brain or excuse me part of the head of the dolphin but they didn't really know too much about those nodes that you see there on the side about the electrical stimuli detection uh, for the dolphin this leads us directly right into the next slide which discusses more about how they did discovered that this snout was had this ability of electrical stimuli detection. Next, I wanted to talk about the study of stimuli detection. Um, this was a study conduced by Nicole Czech Demal. Hopefully I said that right. It's German. Um, it was done in a dolphinarium, a dolphinarium in Germany, which is I'm assuming an aquarium full of dolphins, which is a first. I would love to go and witness that. Um, it was a study conducted on a Guyana dolphin named Paco. Um, the study uh, had a test known as the Go No Go test. It also dealt with various levels of electrical signals being detected. And it was actually uh, a study that was induced by the idea that dolphins didn't have electro sensing uh, that was located within their snout. Now, before I dive into the details, um, they actually figured out that dolphins contain this ability of electroreception by conducting this test in which before they would put a capsule over the snout of the dolphin and they would send it electrical signals and the dolphin would have no response to it. Once they took the plastic uh, protection off the snout and started sending out electrical signals, they noticed that they would get reactions from the dolphin. To go more in depth, Paco, our star of the show, was trained to swim through a hoop and rest his chin on a chin station for the experiments. Uh, the researchers used like copper wires, electrodes placed like right on the snout and um, right below the jaw to generate electrical stimuli. Uh, the electrical stimuli was delivered for like three seconds and they ranged from various different amounts of electrical currents and uh, level charges. Uh, the strength of the electric field, like closest to the dolphin's uh, vibrissal crypts, the sensory organs, was uh, measured using um, a special electrodes. The experiments consisted of like presenting trials with electric stimuli and trials with no electric stimuli and in a staggered order. Um, the dolphin was trained to leave a station when it detected like an, er like an electric stimulus and to remain in a station otherwise if it didn't detect anything. And you know, whenever Paco did the right move, they would feed him his favorite fish um so he had some type of incentive um the data was the data was collected from 31 trials uh, from each of the six stimulus strengths and using a combination of the staircase method and the method of constant stimuli now the dolphin was able to recognize um very low amounts of electrical um signal or electrical stimuli which would makes sense due to the fact that they like to feed mostly on bottom feeder um, fish. Um, so these fish will usually have the lowest amount of electrical current being sent out through their bodies. And it ranged to a high degree to some that can be detected in other sharks, like hammerhead sharks, and also even um, you can sense them from great white sharks. It was discovered that the vibrissal crypts, the small structures on the dolphin's chin, uh, were responsible for detecting the electrical stimuli. So the control experiments were conducted by converting the vibrissal crypts with the plastic shells I mentioned earlier, which showed that the stimuli detection was indeed occurring through the vibrissal crypts. This study conducted by Nicole Czech Demal revealed that Guyana dolphins, like Paco, have the ability to detect weak electrical fields. And these findings contribute to our understanding of how dolphins utilize electroreception for hunting and prey detection. So I wanted to touch on electroreception and how it played a role in the dolphin's navigation and socialization. Um, it's very similar to the lateral line system used by fish. Um, also, uh, social electrical signals are used in territorial interactions, and it provides additional sensory modality to enhance interaction within the environment. In terms of navigation, it can also utilize electroreception to assist them in orienting themselves. Um, just understanding where they are by using um, the Earth's magnetic field and their electrical conductivity of the seawater, um, they can gain valuable information about their location, their direction, and potentially even detect underwater features. 
And as I stated earlier, it also provides additional sensory modality. It complements their echolocation and their visual cues. Uh, it allows the dolphins to navigate accurately, uh, particularly when they're in environments where like visual visibility may be limited, such as uh, hunting, or they're just simply traveling in murky water and they're not usually finding themselves within. So as you can see, electroreception, active and passive, is what makes this Guyana dolphin so unique. Thanks to the snout, aka the rostrum, or better known as the apulae of Lorenzini, these dolphins have the ability to recognize changes in electrical fields in the marine environment, and the vibrable cribs they acquire postnatally also play a major factor in how they detect and navigate throughout the waters that they find themselves in. All of these things play a major factor into the Guyana dolphin's ability of survival and adaptation to whatever environment that they find themselves in. These are also factors that would make the Guyana dolphin and also the bottlenose dolphin uh, more unique than just the regular dolphins that we think of when we talk about echolocation and sonar sensory. All of this information is relatively new, um, especially when we see like testing that we talked about earlier with the no-go go testing that was done in Germany with Paco, the Guyana Dolphin. Um, all of this information usually is new as this fascination has been recently discovered probably in the early 2000s, if I remember correctly, and it's still being studied this day. So there's a lot more that we need to learn and Hopefully we all can appreciate the Guyana Dolphin and their unique abilities that they consist that make them so unique to the marine environment. Thank you for tuning into my video. Thank you, Professor, for reviewing this project. And shout out to anybody else who enjoyed this content. Until next time, thank you.